The potency of the funnel web spider's venom has made it famous the world over, and yet it may not even be the most interesting thing about it. When it comes to funnel web spiders, one or these da- Hello. I did not see you there. When it comes to funnel web spiders, one or these days, maybe two species, are likely to spring to mind. Atrax robustus, the Sydney funnel web, and Atrax christensenii, the so-called Newcastle big boy, which isn't really that big and is all in all a complete non-entity of a spider. Shunted from the spotlight by these two bloated lumps of overhyped mediocrity, however, are a wealth of other funnel web species, some of which hide truly fascinating secrets that are only in recent years beginning to come to light. And here in southeast Queensland, one species of funnel web may prove to be particularly consequential. Of the multitude of funnel web species that can be found in this region, none are more wide ranging and abundant than Hadronici infensa. This spider was first described in 1964 based off specimens collected in Toowoomba, west of Brisbane City. Since then, it has been recorded across much of southeast Queensland. And while a handful of other funnel web species can be found within a two-hour drive from the city, Hadronici infensa is the only funnel web known to occur within Brisbane itself. So for me, as a resident of Bris Vegas, featuring this species is a no-brainer. But despite its proximity and abundance, Finding one can be no simple task. Hadronici infensa may be widespread, but its distribution across this broad range is far from uniform, courtesy of some critical shortcomings. Funnel webs belong to a subdivision of spiders known as the mygalomorphs, which also includes tarantulas and trapdoor spiders. Compared to many of the familiar everyday spiders you may encounter, like jumping spiders, orb weavers, or huntsmen, the anatomy of mygalomorphs has undergone less change over their evolutionary history, and they retain more primitive features, including downward striking fangs, and, crucially, a less developed respiratory system that is both more susceptible to drying out, and less efficient at extracting oxygen than the breathing apparatus possessed by more derived spiders. The flaws of the mygalomorph respiratory system place limits on their potential habitats and behaviours, its inefficiency makes any sort of sustained activity difficult, and its vulnerability to desiccation restricts these spiders to a sheltered life, inhabiting burrows and crevices where cool darkness yet lingers beneath sun and moon alike. But within the confines of these limitations, mygalomorphs have still found plenty of room for success, and funnel webs are no exception. With their poor stamina, these spiders cannot actively hunt their prey, Instead, they are ambush predators, lurking within the confines of their silken fastness and launching out at passing targets with a short, explosive burst of speed and power. Rainforests, rich in moisture, filled with unlimited opportunities for shelter and overflowing with a wealth of potential prey, are unsurprisingly prime habitat for funnel webs, and a wander through almost any rainforest in southeast Queensland can leave you in little doubt of just how successful these spiders can be. Crude silken tunnels, fringed at every opening by a coarse network of trip lines, poke out from the shadowy spaces beneath rocks, logs, and the tangled roots of mighty trees sometimes in such numbers that the turning of a single hunk of debris can yield several of their dwellings. But while locating the spider's webs can, provided you're in the right place, be the simplest of endeavours, extracting the occupant is an altogether more difficult affair. Still, with a bit of determination and no small amount of blind, dumb luck, success is a potentiality. Okay, so this is quite a special find. Normally, with funnel web spiders, when I flip over a log, I'll find the web, but the spider itself will be deep in its burrow and well out of reach. But in this case, this female was still quite close to the entrance of her dwelling, which gave me the rare opportunity to get her out uh, for you all to see. Now, unless I am very much mistaken, this species is Hadronici infensa, and like all funnel webs, it is medically significant. And though the venom of these spiders is famous for its ability to kill, this particular species is very special, and there's a chance that in the future 
a spider like this could save your life. One of the first things worth understanding about venom, well, aside from the fact that you really don't want it inside your body, is that venoms are seldom simple in nature. Many are complex cocktails comprised of a huge array of different chemicals, each with their own properties and functions. Among these sophisticated concoctions, the venom possessed by funnel web spiders is a standout. It's one of the most complex venoms known not just from any spider, but in the entirety of the natural world, with thousands of individual chemical components. But funnel web venoms, though they have their similarities, are not a monolith, and even within a single species, the venom composition can vary between populations and even between individuals. This is very much the case for Hadronici infensa. As mentioned earlier on, Hadronici infensa is quite a widespread species, and as such, it should come as little surprise that some degree of variety occurs across its range and one population is especially noteworthy. Gari, or Fraser Island, is an enormous sand island located about 160 kilometers north of Brisbane, and barely a stone's throw from the coast. Now, you might think an island that is essentially a vast expanse of sand would be hardly suitable for inhabitation by moisture beholden funnel webs, and you'd be correct if it weren't, perhaps, for the influence of one very special and very overlooked kingdom of living things, fungi. Certain fungi, known as mycorrhizal fungi, form mutual partnerships with plants, providing them with access to otherwise unobtainable nutrients, and their presence on Gari has allowed for a proliferation of greenery, forming a rich array of habitats from coastal heath and eucalypt woodlands to luxuriant rainforests. And beneath this verdant canopy, a healthy population of Hadronici infensa thrives. Gari's resident Hadronici infensa are anatomically identical to those on the mainland, but 20,000 years of isolation has led to them being genetically quite distinct, and most notably possessing a unique venomous concoction. This venom is exceedingly potent, with some sources alleging it to be six times as toxic as that of the famed Sydney funnel web. And that's not all. Amid this amalgam of proteins and peptides, a single, very special chemical has been identified, one that may have the potential to combat a threat far more deadly than any spider. Researchers at the University of Queensland have found that one of the chemical compounds in the venom of these spiders, an amino acid named HI1A, shows a promising ability to inhibit the progression of two of humanity's greatest killers, heart attacks and strokes. Heart attacks and strokes account for nearly 30% of human deaths worldwide, and even survivors are very seldom left unscathed, often bearing lifelong and irreversible damage. A major factor in their high rates of mortality is the current lack of approved treatments that can rectify the issue early on and prevent the worst of the effects from ever materialising, and in this regard, HI1A could be a game changer. When a heart attack or stroke occurs, oxygen supply to the heart or brain, respectively, is cut off, and since both of these organs are highly active and require a lot of energy to function, being deprived of oxygen is a life-threatening scenario. In the absence of oxygen, these organs instead switch to an oxygen-free or anaerobic mode of energy production, which can suffice in the short term but comes at a critical cost. This anaerobic production leads to a rapid buildup of lactic acid, analogous to the lactic acid buildup that takes place during high-intensity exercise. And it's this that sets the stage for the debilitating effects of heart attacks and strokes to occur. Lactic acid is acidic. Super advanced science, I know. Feel free to pause the video if you need a couple moments to take it all in. And the accumulation of lactic acid in the heart or brain lowers the organ's pH and causes acid-sensitive ion channels to trigger widespread cell death where muscle cells and neurons in the heart and brain respectively essentially commit mass suicide, which can lead to extensive tissue damage and, in many cases, death. And this is where HI1A comes in. This peptide is an extremely effective inhibitor of the acid-sensing ion channels that trigger cell death, which in turn greatly reduces the damage sustained in the aftermath of a heart attack or stroke. 
Preclinical trials on rats showed the application of a small dose of HI1A greatly reduced the severity of brain damage following a stroke, and was even effective when administered eight hours after the initial stroke onset. Investigations focused on the heart were similarly promising, with an injection of HI1A into mice shown to be very effective at protecting their hearts from damage following a heart attack. This same ability to inhibit the death signal released by the ion channels also has the potential to revolutionise heart transplants as well. Donor hearts typically become unusable after they've stopped beating for around 30 minutes, but treatment with HI1A may, by prolonging the survival of the heart cells, allow donor hearts to remain viable for longer, and in a situation where mere minutes can make all the difference between life and death. The importance of buying some extra time cannot be understated. What's more, this chemical, despite what you may expect given its origin in the venom of a deadly spider, appears to be free of any side effects. All of this sounds very promising, but you may be wondering how supply could ever keep up with demand. Funnelweb spiders, as I can say from experience, aren't always easy to find and their slow growth and reproductive cycles would make large-scale captive breeding initiatives difficult, at least in the near term. But it turns out that none of these issues may even matter at all, because HI1A can be fully replicated in the lab, thus eliminating the need for a continuous supply of live spiders to milk. Though HI1A shows incredible potential, there's still a way to go. As of yet, clinical trials on human patients have yet to be conducted, and these can take a number of years to complete, so there's likely to be some time before we can finally see what sort of life-saving potential a drug derived from this chemical could have. The scientists behind all this have founded an organisation called Infensa Bioscience, and you can check out their website for the latest developments in this fascinating research. Perhaps one day in the hopefully not-so-distant future, Funnelweb spiders, the most notorious spiders in Australia and possibly the world, may save far more lives than they've taken. If you'd like to learn about another Aussie arachnid with a unique and interesting venom, then take a look at this video about a scorpion that can change its venom potency depending on how agitated it is. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next adventure.